So we began the retreat with loving kindness, talking about loving kindness, connecting with loving kindness, and developing the states of consciousness starting with our experience of loving kindness. So tonight I will also end the formal retreat with a sutta about loving kindness. And um, although this sutta is given to the monks um, and some of the training is uh, specifically for the monks, the principles that the Buddha er um, enumerates in the sutta apply to us as well as we develop our loving kindness and as we develop non-ill will. So the name of the sutta is Kakachupana Sutta, the simile of the saw. This I have heard on one occasion the Blessed One was living at Savati in Jetas Grove, Thanpandikas Park. Now on that occasion the Venerable Mohiya Paguna was associating overmuch with bhikkhunis. He was associating so much with bhikkhunis that if any bhikkhu spoke dis dispraise of these bhikkhunis in his presence, he would become angry and displeased and would make a case of it. And if any bhikkhu sp spoke dispraise of the venerable Moha Pagama in those, to those bhikkhu bhikkhunis presence, they would become angry and displeased and would make a case of it. So much was the Venerable Mohiya Paguna associating with bhikkhunis. Then a certain bhikkhu went to the Blessed One and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and told the Blessed One what was taking place. Then the Blessed One addressed a certain bhikkhu thus, Come bhikkhu, Tell the bhikkhu Mohiya Paguna my name, in my name that the teacher calls him. Yes, venerable sir, he replied, and he went to the venerable Mohiya Paguna and told him, the teacher calls you friend Paguna. Yes, friend, he replied, and he went to the blessed one, and after paying homage to him, sat down at one side, the Blessed One asked him, Paguna, is it true that you are associating overmuch with the bhikkhunis, that you are associating so much with bhikkhunis that if any bhikkhu speaks dispraise of these bhikkhunis in your presence, you become angry and displeased and make a case of it. And if any bhikkhu speaks dispraise of you, dispraise of you in those bhikkhunis' presence, they become angry and displeased and make a case of it. Are you associating so much with bhikkhunis as it seems? Yes, venerable sir, Paguna said. Paguna. Are you not a clansman who has gone forth out of the, out of faith for the home? Are you not a clansman who has gone forth out of faith from the home life into homelessness? Yes, venerable sir. Paguna, is it not proper for you, a clansman gone forth out of faith from the home life into homelessness, to associate overmuch with bhikkhunis? Therefore, if anyone speaks dispraise of these bhikkhunis in your presence, you should abandon any des desires and any thoughts based on the household life. And herein you should train thus, my mind will be unaffected and I shall utter no evil words. I shall abide compassionate for his welfare with a mind of loving kindness without inner hate. That is how you should train Paguna. 
If anyone gives these bhikkhunis a blow with his hand, with a clod, with a stick, or with a knife in your presence, you should abandon any desires and any thoughts based on the household life. And herein you should train thus, my mind will be unaffected. If anyone speaks dispraise in your presence, you should abandon any desire and any thoughts based on the household life. And herein you should train thus, my mind will be unaffected. If anyone should give a blow with his hand, with a clod, with a stick or a knife, you should abandon any des desires and thoughts based on the household life. And herein you should train thus, my mind will be unaffected and I shall utter no evil words. I shall abide compassionate for his welfare with a mind of loving kindness, without inner hate. This is how you should train Paguna. Then the Blessed One addressed Bhikkhus thus. Bhikkhus, there was an occasion when the Bhikkhus satisfied my mind. Here I address the Bhikkhus thus. Bhikkhus, I eat at a single session. By so doing, I am free from illness and affliction, and I enjoy lightness, strength, and comfortable abiding. Come, bhikkhus, eat at a single session. By so doing, you will be free from illness and affliction, and you will enjoy lightness, strength, and comfortable abiding. And I had no need to keep on instructing those bhikkhus. I had only to arouse mindfulness in them. Suppose there was a chariot on even ground at the crossroads, harnessed to thoroughbreds, waiting with gold lying ready, so that a skilled trainer, a charioteer of horses to be tamed, might mount it and taking the reins in his left hand and the goad in his right hand, might drive out and back by any road whenever he likes. So I had no need to keep on instructing those bhikkhus. I had only to arouse mindfulness in them. Therefore, bhikkhus, abandon what is unwholesome and devote yourselves to wholesome states, for that is how you will come to growth, increase, and fulfillment in this Dhamma and discipline. Suppose there was a big solid tree grove near a village or town, and it was choked with castor oil weeds, and some man would appear desiring its good welfare and protection. He would cut down and throw out the crooked saplings that, that robbed the sap, and he would clean up the interior of the grove and tend the straight, well-formed saplings, so that the solitary grove, la grove later on would come to growth, increase, and fulfillment. So too, bhikkhus, abandon what is unwholesome and devote yourself to wholesome states, for that is how you will come to growth, increase, and fulfillment in the Dhamma and discipline. Formerly, bhikkhus, in this same Savati, there was a housewife named Vedahika, and a good report about Mistress Vedahika had spread through thus. Mistress Vedahika is gentle. Mistress Vedahika is meek. Mistress Vedahika is peaceful. Now, Mistress Vedahika had a maid named Kali, who was clever, nimble, and neat in her work. The maid Kali thought, a good report about my lady has spread thus. Mistress Venahika is gentle. Mistress Venahika is meek. Mistress Venahika is peaceful. How is it now, while she does not show anger, is it never the less actually present in her, or is it absent? Or else is it just because my work is neat that my lady shows no anger, though it is actually present in her? Suppose I test my lady. 
So the maid, Collie, got up late. Then Mr. Svetahika said, Hey, Collie, what is it, madam? What is the matter with you get a, getting up so late? Nothing is the matter, madam. Nothing is the matter, you wicked girl. Y yet you get up so late. And she was angry and displeased, and she scowled. Then the maid, Collie, thought, the fact is that my lady does not show anger. It is actually present in her, not absent. And it is just because my work is neat that my lady shows no anger, though it is actually present in her, not absent. Suppose I test my lady a little more. So the maid Kali got up later in the day that then Mr. Ve Mistress Vedahika said, Hey, Kali. What is it, madam? What is the matter with you getting up late in the day? Nothing is the matter. Madam, nothing is the matter, you wicked girl. Yet you get up late in the day. And she was angry and displeased, and she spoke words of displeasure. Then the maid collie thought, the fact is that when my lady does not show anger, it's actually present in her, not absent. And it is just because my work is neat that my lady shows no anger, though it is actually present in her, not absent. Suppose I test my lady a little more. So the maid Kali got up still later in the day. Then Mistress Vedahika said, Hey, Kali, what is the, what is, what is it, madam? What is the matter with you? You, you still get up late in the day. Nothing is the matter, madam. Nothing is the matter, you wicked girl. You get up still later in the day. And she was angry and displeased, and she, she took a rolling pin and gave a blow to the head and cut her head. Then the maid Collie, with blood running from her cut head, denounced Mistress Metahika to the neighbors. See, ladies, the gentle ladies work. See, ladies, the meek ladies work. See, ladies, the peaceful ladies work. How can she, be, she become angry with the displeased with her only maid for getting up late? How can she take a rolling pin? give her a blow on the head and cut her head. Then later on, bad report about Mr. V Mistress Vedahika spread thus. Mistress Vedahika is rough. Mistress Vedahika is violent. Mistress Vedahika is merciless. So too bhikkhus. Some bhikkhu is extremely gentle, extremely meek, extremely peaceful, so long as disagreeable courses of speech do not cut, touch him. But it is when disagreeable courses of speech touch him that it can be understood whether the bhikkhu is really kind, gentle, and peaceful. I do not call a bhikkhu easy to admonish who is, who is easy to admonish and makes himself easy to admonish only for the sake of getting robes, alms food, and resting place, and medi medical requisites. Why is that? Because that bhikkhu is not easy to admonish nor make himself easy to admonish when he gets no robes, no alms food, no resting place, and no medical requisites. But when a bhikkhu is easy to admonish and makes himself easy to admonish because he honors, respects, and reveres the Dhamma, him I call easy to admonish. Therefore, bhikkhus, you should train thus. We shall be easy to admonish and make ourselves easy to admonish because we honor, respect, and revere the Dhamma. That is how you should train bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, there are these five courses of speech that others may use when they address you. Their speech may be timely or untimely, 
true or untrue, gentle or harsh, connected with good or with harm, spoken with a mind of loving kindness or with inner hate. When others address you, their speech may be timely or untimely. When others address you, their speech may be true or untrue. When others address you, their speech may be gentle or harsh. When others address you, their speech may be connected with good or with harm. When others address you, their speech may be spoken with a mind of loving kindness or with inner hate. Here in bhikkhus you should train thus. Our minds will remain unaffected and we shall utter no evil words. We shall abide compassionate for their welfare with a mind of loving kindness without inner hate. We shall abide pervading that person with a mind imbued with loving kindness and uh, starting with him we shall abide pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind imbued with loving kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility, and without ill will. That is how you should train bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, suppose a man came with a hoe and a basket and said, I shall make this great earth be without earth. He would dig here and there, strew the soil here and there, spit here and there, and urinate here and there, saying, be without earth, be without earth. What do you think, Because Would that man make this great earth to be without earth? No, venerable sir. Why is that? Because this great earth is deep and immeasurable, it is not easy to make it without earth. Eventually, the man would reap only weariness and disappointment. So too, because there are these five courses of speech, the ones that I gave already. Here in because you should train thus. Our minds will remain unaffected. And a and starting with him, we shall abide pervading all encompassing world with a mind similar to the earth, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. That is how you should train bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, suppose a man with crimson, turmeric, indigo and carmine came and said, I shall draw pictures and make pictures appear on empty space. What do you think, Bhikkhus? Could that man draw pictures and make pictures appear on empty space? No, venerable sir. Why is that? Because empty space is formless and non-manifestive. It is not easy to draw pictures there or make pictures appear there. Eventually, the man would reap only weariness and disappointment. So too, bhikkhus, there are these five courses of speech. Here in bhikkhus, you should train thus. Our minds will remain unaffected. And starting with him, we shall abide pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind similar to empty space, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. That is how you should train bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, suppose a man came with a blazing grass torch and said, I shall heat up and burn away the river Ganges with this blazing grass torch. What do you think, Bhikkhus? Could that man heat up and burn away the river Ganges with that blazing grass torch? No, venerable sir. Why is that? Because the river Ganges is deep and immense. It is not easy to heat it up or burn it away with a blazing grass torch. Eventually, the man would reap only weariness and disappointment. So too, bhikkhus, there are these five courses of speech. Here in bhikkhus, you should train thus. Our minds will remain unaffected. 
and starting with him we shall abide pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind similar to the river Ganges, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility, and without ill will. This is how you should train bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, suppose there was a cat skin bag that was rubbed well, well rubbed, thoroughly well rubbed, soft, silky, rid of rustling, rid of crackling, and a man came with a stick or a potsherd and said, there is this catskin bag that is rubbed, rid of rustling, rid of crackling. I shall make it rustle and crackle. What do you think, Bhikkhus? Could that make man make it rustle or crackle with a stick or the potsherd? No, venerable sir. Why is that? Because the catskin bag being rubbed Rid of rustling, rid of crackling is not easy to make it rustle or crackle with a stick or with a potsherd. Eventually the man would reap only weariness and disappointment. So too, bhikkhus, there are these five courses of speech that others may use when they address you. Their speech may be timely or untimely, true or untrue gentle or harsh, connected with good or with harm, spoken with a mind of loving kindness or with inner hate. When others address you, their speech may be timely or untimely. When others address you, their speech may be true or untrue. When others address you, their speech may be gentle or harsh. When others address you, their speech may be connected with good or with harm. When others address you, their speech may be spoken with a mind of loving kindness or with inner hate. Here in Bhikkhus, you should train thus. Our minds will remain unaffected, and we shall utter no evil words. We shall abide compassionate for their welfare, with a mind of loving kindness, without inner hate. We shall abide pervading the person with a mind imbued with loving kindness. And starting with him, we shall abide pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind similar to a cat skin bag, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility, and without ill will. That is how you should train bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, even if bandits were to sever you savagely, limb by limb, with a two-handed saw, he who gave rise to a mind of hate towards them would not be carrying out my teaching. Here in bhikkhus, you should train thus. Our minds will remain unaffected, and we shall utter no evil words. We shall abide compassionate for their welfare, with a mind of loving kindness, without inner hate. We shall abide pervading them with a mind imbued with loving kindness. And starting with them, we shall abide pervading the all-encompassing world, with a mind imbued with loving kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility, without ill will. That is how you should train bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, if you keep this advice on the simile of the saw constantly in mind, do you see any course of speech, trivial or gross, that you could not endure? No, venerable sir. Therefore, bhikkhus, you should keep this advice on the simile of the saw constantly in mind. That will lead to your welfare and happiness for a long time. That is what the Blessed One said, and the bhikkhus were satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words.
and I have a handout for you. Maybe um, you could come up and hand it out to everyone. This is from one of the discourses of the Buddha on loving kindness, a discourse on the benefits of spreading loving kindness. And the other part is on serving dishes. And, how, and this just reinforces the lessons about loving kindness. Open for questions about any topic that you want to bring up from the week or from the discourse or but I will say that one of the questions that came up I think um, is very pertinent to what we do uh, what we could do when we leave um, the retreat and that is uh, really keeping in mind this discourse because in the workaday world, in the world of our daily life, we have a lot of verbiage that is coming at us either on the internet or coming at us um, from family and friends or coming at us from our work colleagues and it's not right speech and people are attached to their views and they're very passionate about what they think should be done for the future and they have uh, clinging and craving and all that going on so what to do I think this particular sutta tells you how you can retreat from a unwholesome engagement with either the news or the um, internet chatter or all the other kinds of communication that go on in daily life and really use the principle of not engaging in an unkind and an un unwholesome way it is a great refuge because right now our world is in a big turmoil. I mean, there's wars going on, there's political battles going on, everybody's stabbing each other with verbal daggers. And um, if you can touch in on the peacefulness and the loving kindness, realizing this is all coming out of a ball of suffering. And so um, using the Buddha's teaching as a refuge, I think that is a wonderful, a wonderful uh, takeaway from the retreat. Also, the Eightfold Path has eight folds. It's not just the meditation. It's also keeping the precepts. So when you go home, um, strive to keep the precepts as closely as you can. And again, Mara is very, very tricky and will, you know, try to engage you in breaking the precepts and, you know, and um, doing yourself harm. So pay attention to how you keep the precepts and how what is the growing edge for you to keep the precepts. Um, and of course, there's the wisdom, um, studying, listening to some of the Dhamma talks that are on the uh, internet. Um, for those who are very studious and really want to get into the discourses in a deep way, Bhikkhu Bodhi's talks I think are very uh, valuable in a scholarly way and then the discourses by, uh, by the talks by by um, uh, Delson and Bhante Vilma Ramsey that gets you more in touch with right view um, so I, I as I said I have talked to each person 
about their practice after, after the retreat. <laughs>